Now we're going to talk about the prefix of the metric system, the symbols that correspond to it, and the multiplier. So first, we're going to start with deca. The symbol for deca is da. The multiplier is 10 to the 1, or just 10. Hecto has a symbol lowercase h. The multiplier is 10 squared, or 100. Kilo, kilo is lowercase k, and it's 10 to the third, or a thousand. So what this means is that one kilogram is a thousand grams or one times ten to the third grams. Next up we have mega. Now it's not going to be a lowercase but this is a capital case capital M and this is ten to the six. Mega is basically a million. So a megawatt, a megawatt power plant produces 1 times 10 to the 6 watts, or a million watts. Next up we have Giga, represented by the symbol capital G. Giga is 10 to the 9, which is equivalent to a billion. So a gigajoule is 1 times 10 to the 9 joules. So what I have here are called conversion factors. Notice how I'm writing all of my conversion factors. This is going to be important when we're solving problems. So what you always want to do is you always want to attach a 1 to the prefix. And then the multiplier goes with the base unit, whether it's joules for energy, watts for power, grams for mass. So you always attach the multiplier to the base unit. And it makes it easy to, to write the conversion factors. Once you have the conversion factors down, then it's going to be easy to convert from one unit to another. After Giga, what we have next is Terra, capital T. Terra is 10 to the 12, which is equivalent to a trillion. So 1 terawatt is 1 times 10 to the 12 watts. After Terra, the next one in the list is Peta. In most cases, if you're studying for an exam, Typically, you need to know up to Terra. So going past 10 to the 12, you usually don't need to know these unless your professor gives you, you know, these notes. But usually up to 12 is, you know, the limit. But there are some other ones beyond 12, and I'm going to give it to you. Peta is 10 to the 15. So remember, Mega is a million, Giga is a billion, Terra is a trillion, Peta represents a quadrillion. Exa, capital E, that's 10 to the 18, which is a quint quintillion. After Exa, you have Zeta, and that's not a lowercase e, but this is a capital Z, but I am running out of space. Zeta is 10 to the 21st, or 10 to the 21. And that is a sextillion. After that, we have Yoda, represented by the symbol capital Y. And that's 10 to the 24th, which is a septillion. So if you know up to 10 to the 12, you should be OK for your exam. Now, let's go over the multipliers that have a negative exponent. This is the other half. So let's start with the prefix deci, represented by the symbol lowercase d. Deci is 10 to the minus 1. Next we have centi, lowercase c, that's 10 to negative 2. And then milli, lowercase m is 10 to the minus 3. The only time you have a capital symbol is mega and above, like mega, giga, terra, and anything above that. Everything else, the symbols are lowercase. 
So think about what this means. Think about how we can write a conversion factor with this information. One centimeter, always put a prefix in front of, put a one in front of the prefix. One centimeter is one times 10 to the minus two meters. So always attach the multiplier to the base unit. One milliliter is one times 10 to the minus three liters. Now, once you write this conversion factor, what you can do is you can alter it. If we multiply both sides by 100, we get that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. 10 to the negative two times 100 is simply one. If we multiply this by 1,000, we get this common conversion factor. 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. So if you can write the standard conversion factors, you can get the common ones as well, simply by adjusting the equation. Now, after milli, the next one is micro. Micro is 10 to the minus six. So one micrometer is one times 10 to the negative six meters. After micro, we have a nano, lowercase n, nano is 10 to the minus nine. So think of 10 to the nine, which was giga, that represents one billion. Nano, 10 to the negative nine is a billionth. Mega, 10 to the six was a million. Micro, 10 to the minus six is a millionth, with a th at the end. So one nanometer is one times 10 to the negative nine meters. After nano, it's pico, lowercase p, 10 to negative 12. One picometer is one times 10 to negative 12 meters. Now there's some other ones below this, so I'm going to run through the list quickly. Next we have femto, lowercase f, that's 10 to negative 15. After femto is atto, with the symbol lowercase a, and this is 10 to negative 18. After atto, it's zepto, lowercase z, 10 to negative 21. And after zepto, it is yakto, lowercase y, 10 to negative 24. But for the smaller units, typically you need to know up to pico. So you need to know from pico, 10 to negative 12, to tera, 10 to the positive 12. And those are the common prefixes that you're going to encounter in class. The other ones, they're optional. Typically, they're not commonly used. Now, let's talk about how we can convert from one unit to another. So, for instance, let's say if we have 478 meters and we wish to convert it to kilometers. How can we do that? Well, this is a one-step conversion problem. So we just need to know the conversion factor between kilometers and meters. We know that kilo represents 10 to the third or a thousand. So we can write the conversion factor. One kilometer, always put a one in front of the prefix. One kilometer is one times 10 to the third meters. So step one, write a one, write the prefix with the base unit, write the multiplier, and then the base unit without the prefix. And that's how you can write your conversion factor. Now to convert it, start with what you're given. We're given 478 meters. We'll put it over one. In the next fraction, we're going to put our conversion factor. Notice that we have the unit meters on top. So to cancel meters, we need to put this part of the equation in the bottom. This is going to be one times 10 to the three meters. And then the other part, it's going to go on top. So we need to set the fractions in such a way that the unit we want to convert from disappears and the unit that we want to get to remains. So this becomes 478 divided by 1000 and that gives us the answer 0.478 kilometers. So that's how you can do a one-step conversion problem. Let's try another one. 
let's say we have four hundred actually let's say 0.236 liters and we want to convert that to milliliters feel free to pause the video and try that example so first let's write the conversion factor one milliliter is equal to remember milli is 10 to the minus 3 so it's going to be 1 and then we're going to put the multiplier 10 to negative 3 and then the base unit liters so that's our conversion factor now let's start with what we're given we're given 0.236 liters we'll put that over 1 now we got to find out what goes on the top and the bottom of the next fraction since we have liters on top of the first fraction we want liters to be on the bottom of the second which means milliliters have to go on top so this number attached to liters has to go on the bottom so we'll put 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liters on the bottom and then this will by default go on top so this tells us that we need to divide by a thousand to convert liters into milliliters actually not by a thousand we need to divide by 10 to the minus 3 which is 0 0.001 that has the equivalent effect of multiplying by a thousand so it's 0.236 you can divide it by 0.01 or if you multiply by a thousand you're going to get 236 milliliters by the way when dividing this put this in parentheses because your calculator may divide by 1 and then multiply by 10 to negative 3 now let's try a two-step conversion problem let's say we have hmm, 496 micrometers and we want to convert that to actually let's say this is in picometers 496 picometers and we want to convert that to micrometers try that problem now even though there are shortcut methods available that you can use what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this one step at a time I'm gonna convert picometers into the base unit meters and then meters to micrometers so let's write the conversion factor from pico to meters pico is 10 to the minus 12 so one picometer is 1 times 10 to negative 12 meters we'll use that in the first step for the second step we'll convert meters to micrometers one micrometer we know it's micro is 10 to the minus 6 so it's 1 times 10 to negative 6 and then the base unit meters so let's start with what we're given 496 picometers over 1 let's use the first conversion factor to go from picometers to meters so because we have the unit picometers on the top left we're going to put it on the bottom right of the second fraction meters is going to go on top so we have 1 picometer is equal to 10 to negative 12 meters so now the unit picometers will cancel and now let's use the second conversion factor to go from meters to micrometers since we have meters here we're going to put meters on the bottom micrometers on top so it's one micrometer and the number that's attached to meters is 10 to negative 6 so now we can cross out the unit meters so when we do the math we're going to get the answer so you can plug this in your calculator or you can do it mentally let's talk about how we can do this mentally so we have 496 we can ignore the 1 what's important here is the 10 to negative 12 now notice that we have a 10 to negative 6 on the bottom what we can do is take this and move it to the top 
if you have let's say x to the negative 3 this is 1 over x cubed if you move it from the bot from the top to the bottom the exponent changes sign it goes from negative 3 to positive 3 likewise if you have a negative exponent on the bottom and you decide to move it to the top it'll go from negative to positive so if you flip it or if you move it from one side to the other side of the fraction it's going to change sign so it's 10 to negative 6 on the bottom but when we move it to the top it's going to be 10 to the positive 6 now when multiplying common bases we can add the exponents negative 6 I mean negative 12 plus 6 that's going to be negative 6. So we have 496 times 10 to negative 6. And the unit is the unit that's left over, micrometers. Now we need to move the decimal two units to the left. 496 is the same as 4.96 times 10 to the second power. 10 squared is 100, so 4.96 times 100 is 496. And then we still have 10 to negative 6 as well. So adding these two will give us negative 4. The final answer is going to be 4.96 times 10 to the negative 4 micrometers. So that's how you can do a problem like that without the use of a calculator. We typically leave our answer in scientific notation. So you want the decimal point to be between the first two non-zero numbers. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have 3.54 times 10 to the negative actually let's say positive 10 to the positive 7 nanometers and let's convert that to kilometers go ahead and try that problem by the way for those of you who want harder problems to work on Go to the YouTube search bar, type in unit conversion, organic chemistry tutor, and a video that I've created, it's a very long video, uh, will show up and you'll get more harder problems that involve unit conversion. Now for this problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert nanometers to meters and then meters to kilometers. So because it's a two-step problem, I need two conversion factors. The first one, one nanometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. The second one, 1 kilometer, kilometer is 10 to the 3, so it's 1 times 10 to the 3 meters. So those are our two conversion factors that we're going to use. Now let's start with what we're given, 3.54 times 10 to the 7 nanometers. Now, I want nanometers on the bottom and meters on top so that these will cancel. And then I want meters on the bottom and my final unit, kilometers, on top so that these will cancel. So now I just got to fill it in. So we have a 1 in front of the nanometer. We'll put that here. And then it's 10 to negative 9 meters. So this will go here. For the second one, we have a 1 in front of kilometers and 10 to the 3 in front of meters. So now let's do the math. It's 3.54 times 10 to the 7, and then we have 10 to negative 9. And we're going to move this to the top. That's going to be 10 to the minus 3. So now let's add 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2 negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. So the final answer is going to be 3.54 times 10 to negative 5 kilometers. So that's how you can do a two-step conversion problem when dealing with units in the metric system. Thanks for watching.